Мотор. Да. Hello, Aviators, Sky here, and today we are going to Russia. Since the beginning of the 1990s in the city of Zhukovsky near Moscow, the International Aviation and Space Show is being held, which this time landed right on the edge between summer and autumn, from August 27 to September 1st. A lot has been shown here, the good old nostalgic machines, the brand new ones, and even those which are not yet developed. I invite you to a tour, welcome to MAX 2019. This tour begins, of course, not with luxurious flights and pretty girls, but with an adventurous journey to the air show. The show is being held on the territory of the Raminske airfield, one of the main test sites of the Russian aviation science, about 20 kilometers southeast from the capital. And now this large airfield is almost fully occupied by the show. The main runway remains free of the exhibition and serves its intended purpose. All of the guest stars of the show take off and land here. With a length of 5.5 kilometers, or almost 3.5 miles, the runway is perfectly suited for this work. With such characteristics, it can work with any machine that can fly at all. The runway located to the north is smaller, and during the air show it became a stomping ground for hundreds of thousands of guests. It is almost completely occupied by the parked aircraft of all types, from small drones to giant transports and bombers. Too bad Ruslan isn't here. In this company it would feel itself right at home. However, the first to meet us at this parking is not a Russian, but a guest no less interesting than its local counterparts. To MAX 2019, Airbus brought its biggest love and pride, the A350 airliner. It is not the big 1000, but the basic model, Dash 900, moreover one of the earliest. The board MSN002 took off back in 2014, and it is one of the five prototypes that took part in certification tests. Besides, each of the five was responsible for its own part of the work, and our guest was mainly engaged in the development of interior systems, and is doing the same thing here. The A350 itself is not a newcomer at max, but its interior is a premiere. Visually, it is not much different from the usual cabins, but the upgraded aerospace connected experience system makes it smarter. Its basis is a communication network in which all the interior elements are integrated. Seats, galleys, beans, kitchen, lighting, climate and so on. A kind of local intranet of things gives the crew a more detailed control over the cabin. Oh yes, now they will see on the tablet whether you have fastened your seatbelt, will clearly know how many dinners there are and who is trying to shove too much baggage into the bin. Passengers will receive better service and, of course, a bunch of colorful multimedia systems for their own amusement. Plus, the stored data will allow the airlines to understand more accurately what is happening on their planes. By the way, I never got on board. Apparently the XWB is offended that the video about it lasts about 10 minutes, while the video about the Dreamliner is half an hour long. Don't be angry, big guy. We'll fix it. From the outside, of course, it looks awesome. The wing, mechanization, chocolates are real industrial design erotica. And the engines, well, Rolls-Royce is Rolls-Royce. Next to the flagship of the European aviation industry stands the aviation flagship of Brazil. The famous Profit Hunter flew to visit Max, the second generation Embraer E195 E2 Cyberpunk Lion. The 195th is the big brother in its family. It is almost 9 meters longer than the Junior 175, has a takeoff mass of up to 61.5 tons or over 135,000 pounds. And the Pratt Whitney pure power engines can fly it at 4800 kilometers or 2600 nautical miles. Hmm, brand new turbofan engines, beautiful. However, the most interesting part of this aircraft is inside. 
The cockpit has a very familiar layout, with classic Embraer yokes and the brand new Honeywell Primus Epic II glass cockpit, which is the core of the cockpits of many aircraft, mainly business jets. Technically, the E-195 can be called the largest owner of this complex. Curiously, the cockpit has its own display of the cabin monitoring system. Safety first. The interior of the airliner in the economy class is quite classic, with a 2 plus 2 layout. Grey leather seats, windows, luggage bins and nice lighting, all quite familiar with minor improvements. But there is more innovation in business class. Our board is a demonstrator of a new layout of high comfort seats. They are staggered here, with a slight indent from each other. At first glance a strange solution, in practice turns out to be very interesting. The fact is that the width of the cabin of the aircraft is pretty modest, so they can't put four large seats in a row here, most often there are three of them. But this new design allows to use seats that are a little more narrow, while leaving a lot of space for shoulders and also for the legs. The business class remains a business class. Such an arrangement may require a little more length, but with it, in fact, adds a whole row along the side. The capacity of the senior Embraer can go from 120 passengers in a 3-class layout to as many as 146 in a single-class compacted one, with 28-inch pitch, boldly stepping on the toes of the junior Airbus models that did not indulge us with their presence here, so I am not gonna talk about them. We leave the beautiful Brazilian and go to the other side of the parking. It's funny how Max continues the tradition of the Paris air show and puts competitors to stand politely close to each other. In front of the Embraer original jet there is a couple of Suhoi original jets, the SSJ-100 planes of the Aeroflot and Yakutia airlines. In Russia, of course, the Superjet is much more famous than the E-jets, however nowadays this fame is somewhat controversial. Nevertheless, all the nuances do not cancel the fact that the SSJ-100 is still one of the most comfortable aircraft in its class, and in terms of cabin dimensions, it should probably be compared to the medium hull airliners, rather than with original planes. Its cabin is almost half a meter wider than that of the Embraer, and this is a lot for such aircraft. In the economy class, additional space made it possible to put another row of seats in the 3 plus 2 scheme, and in business class respectively 4 seats in a row in the usual scheme, without using any magic in the layouts. The airliner at max is not the premier of course, this title was taken by the MC-21. We are walking on a regular, serious Aeroflot plane, with a standard set of equipment accommodating 87 passengers, 12 business class seats plus 75 in economy. Dark blue leather with orange accents, classic colors, minimalism and good quality. Pretty standard design. The aircraft parking, at least its western part, is a real illusions kingdom. Many modifications of the Il-76 transport stand above smaller planes. Here is the brand new Il-78M 90A aerial tanker, Il-76 MDK of the Russian Cosmonaut Training Center and Il-76 LL, a flying lab under the wing of which the experimental PD-14 turbofan is basking in the sun. This brand new model, and the main brainchild of the Russian civilian engine industry, is now slowly approaching the completion of tests at stands and flying labs, and will soon be placed under the wing of its main owner. The MC-21 airliners are now being powered by the Pratt-Whitney PW-1000G family, but soon will also be equipped with their domestic motors as an option. There is another Il-76LL with a TV7-117ST turboprop engine suspended under the wing. This is a deeply modernized engine which will be applied on the new Il-112V military transport that made its maiden flight recently and on the modernized and in some sense reborn Il-114-300 which I met on departure later in the evening. It's interesting to observe how the speed of the rotor's rotation gets synchronized with the frame rate of the camera. On the other side of the exposition was presented the main aerial firefighter, the B-200 amphibious aircraft. At the airshow, agreements were signed with the companies from New Zealand and Cyprus to support export. The B-200s are excellent amphibians, but less than two dozen of them are flying now. It's time to spread them around the world, a lot of good may come out of it. 
The plane separated civilian airliners from the military, the parade of which started next. Drones, interceptors, attack aircraft, fighters and killers of all types and teams for any taste. The star here, of course, was a newcomer of the static parking, Suhoi Su-57 with the prefix E for export. Given the success of the Su-27 and its modifications on the world market, aviators want to continue this tradition for the fifth generation. There's a reason why Putin was dragging around the Turkish President Erdogan the whole day and made him eat ice cream. Turkey is quite interesting for the Russian military export. The Su-27 and its modifications are also here, of course. These are serious planes, they've already flown and fought, so in front of the guests they feel like real fashion models since they don't get any less beautiful over the years. By the way, among the military aircraft there were several nostalgic surprises. Here at the air show we could meet the prototypes of the MiG-144 and the star of the previous shows, the Su-47 with a forward swept wing. And while the MiG's appearance seems a bit unusual, although its layout is being used by some Chinese military aircraft, the Suhoi is a real constructive exotic. The black hull, forward sweep, the wings, all the wings. Very unusual and very beautiful. Of course the planes never finished testing, but still, they look pretty good. Where there is Suhoi, Meek and Ilushin, there have to be the children of the big daddy, Tupolev. The 222M3 and 2160. Large and formidable birds, the sizes of which are well demonstrated by placing a small diamond in between them. The 295 is the usual guest, the tour of which is always an interesting time to spend. Nearby, we see the legends. The Supersonic 2144, after all the videos, is almost like family to us. And a little further stands the no less interesting giant. The VMT Atlant heavy transport aircraft, which at one time took over the main work of transporting elements of the Energia Buran space complex. Ironically, it is almost forgotten, and its merits are often attributed to the giant An-225, which in fact never actually participated in the Soviet shuttle program. The journey through the parking can be completed with the products of the Russian Helicopters Corporation, their furious predatory models and an ensemble of civilian vehicles. Ka-226, Ka-62, Ka-32A11VS, oh boy, and Mi-38, which looks great. We're waiting for its release in the near future. Fortunately, here at MAX it got a chance to fly and has shown itself pretty good. One of the highlights of the exhibition, at least in its helicopter part, was the ANSAT light helicopter. And not a simple ANSAT. As it turns out, seeing the good prospects of the Oros cars, the large Russian luxury sedans, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and Rostec Corporation thought it would be cool to expand the line of this new brand not only to several other models, but also to a helicopter. The most suitable Russian helicopter for such a task is ANSAT, a fairly simple machine which, moreover, is already being mass-produced and actively operated in various roles. The result of this joint work was ANSAT Aorus, a luxury helicopter with a VIP cabin for 5 passengers, all the relevant bonuses and a multitude of interesting solutions. In order for the specialists to be able to easily compare the two machines, they were put on a separate stand side by side. I won't be talking about this couple in detail now, there are special plans for them, stay tuned to the channel. Next, our path runs through many huge pavilions, all of which are packed with so many interesting things that even several days wouldn't be enough to see everything. Of course, each corporation in the industry has its own large stand. They organized a competition here, who is cooler and more colorful. UAC, Russian Helicopters, Roscosmos and other manufacturers of everything that flies. A real party for experts and fans. And of course, if there is something flying, we also need something that can put it back on the ground, the easy way or the hard way. 
the Tactical Missiles Corporation and Almas Antey are deployed here in full force, with stands, presentations, screens and real-size exhibits. In one of the pavilions there are many research centers operating in the aerospace industry. One of the most interesting is of course the father of all aviation scientists of the country. Zhukovsky Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, aka Tsagi, which recently celebrated its first century of work. Among their exhibits there was a lot of interesting things, among which the main prospect of air transportation, as well as the source of many rumors, a supersonic civilian aircraft. The work on it really is being carried out with the attempts to determine the layout and refinement of the latest solutions and technologies. There's actually a lot of interesting things, it's a big topic for scientific and design thought. Oh yes, spoilers, no one is going to develop the 2160 business jet. The Moscow Aviation Institute is also here and it pleases guests with many bonuses, original ideas and of course students. In the words of the great Tupolev, a beautiful designer will have a beautiful airplane. Although that's not quite how he said it, but so what, they have a robot here. Here it is really felt that Max, although being international, is still to a high degree a Russian show. Not that much foreign technology here, and the industry giants are not very active. Airbus was not showing off very much, demonstrating the models A321 and A350, while the real A350 was flying in the sky above the pavilion. They still have great plans for the Russian market, and the newest widebody airliner will soon arrive to stay. It is already awaited by the Aeroflot. The Boeing stand, located in a corner, was not so modest. On the other hand, we didn't see a single real Boeing plane at the show, so the Europeans showed themselves better anyway. The Americans presented the mock-ups of the Boeing 777X and Boeing 787, as well as the supersonic Arion AS2 business jet. Not very impressive, although in current conditions it is better not to show the 737 MAX model too much. Here at the show, several agreements were signed with the Russian partners and a number of technical innovations were shown, but nothing epic. After them, the Chinese exposition looks gigantic. For the main foreign partner of Max, a whole large pavilion was built, and there the guys from China did not hold themselves back, showing everything, from small devices to power plants and machines of all types and even launch rockets, mock-ups of course. Among all this technological beauty, the working model of the C-119 airliner cockpit stands out. For a modern mid-range airliner the cockpit looks quite usual, its relatives are close to it in design. Classic layout, large glazing, multifunctional display, size to control. The colors look a bit exotic. Brown, almost red dashboards and seats. But the Chinese like it. You can immediately understand whose plane it is. Since we are walking around the Chinese part of the Russian air show, I think it's time to look at one of the most interesting exhibits and, in combination, a common project of the two countries. The brainchild of the UAC and COMAC, the wide-body long-range aircraft, the work on which began several years ago, has started to take a real shape, displayed here as a full-size mock-up of the frontal part of the fuselage. I present to you the CR-929, almost real. The layout is very detailed, with many systems that really work, well, or look like they really work. It was done not as much for the needs of design as for demonstration to partners, customers and sometimes the public. Dynamic interior elements, lighting, electrochromic windows, looks great. In this part of the cabin, three layout options were placed at once, an economy class, assembled according to the 3 plus 3 plus 3 scheme. A business class, 1 plus 2 plus 1, with extra comfort seats, additional tools, tables and TV screens. And of course, the most luxurious first class, also with the 1 plus 2 plus 1 scheme, but in separate cabins with seats turning into beds and fully stocked in terms of comfort, in the best traditions of top airlines. A special exhibit is the cockpit. It is of course also quite classic for modern long-haul wide-body aircraft. The standards are harsh, the industry does not allow too much exotic, but it still looks great. Good ergonomics, comfortable placement, a lot of space and absolutely wild glazing. 
This is no longer a cockpit, but an observation deck. Here I should note that we are nevertheless in a mock-up, not in a real plane. The layout here is very approximate, and the glazing is planned to be made a bit more modest, but it is still impressive. The basic CR929 offers accommodations from 281 passengers in a 3-class layout to 405 in a single class, with a maximum certified capacity of 440 people. Of course, it is planned to create a family. In addition to the basic CR929-600 model, the shortened version, Dash 500, and the stretch 700 will be created. In terms of these indicators and ranges from 10 to 14,000 kilometers, they will be direct competitors to both the Boeing 787 and the European guest of the airshow, the A350 airliner. Considering that both aircraft are the most advanced Boeing and Airbus models, it is fair to say that the task of Russian and Chinese aviators is very ambitious. It will not be easy to compete with those monsters. Nevertheless, work is being carried out at an active pace, and we will see the real planes in the mid-2020s. The project is being developed by the UAC and COMAC joint venture, the Crake Corporation. By now, the general design of the aircraft has already been formed, and the aviators are working out elements, developing equipment, and choosing suppliers of systems. All of them. This isn't just a completely new aircraft. In fact, such a project has not been implemented in Russia for a long time, and has never been implemented in China. We will follow their work and wish them success. There cannot be too many big and beautiful planes. An ideal continuation to the story of the main project of the 2020s would be the main project of today. Oh yes, finally, at MAX 2019, the MC-21 was displayed publicly. It is not really that much of a secret plane, and it can often be seen here flying about the city, but only now we can look at it up close. At MAX, three prototypes were shown. The first, one of the earliest, stood near the entrance to the parking, just next to the superjets. The second prototype participated in the flight program. The third one was posing on a separate stand in a green area with wooden walkways, and was surrounded by the beautiful employees of the Irkut Corporation. This plane is equipped with the first MC passenger cabin, large, comfortable, and with a white aisle, their big pride. Looks good, the aircraft will finish certification and start its operations soon. One of the reasons it was not possible to get on the plane was the fact that it was constantly loaded with corporate and political delegations, the main of which came at the beginning. Yes, on the first day, there were several non-standards exhibits at the airshow. A couple of presidential IL-96 arrived here, which in fact brought the big chiefs. At that moment, I was in the parking lot of business aviation, when all of a sudden, the big guys with serious faces blocked the entire way, and I got stuck in a cabin of Pilatus PC-24. Stuck in a luxury cabin of a brand new business jet, with beautiful ladies, representatives of Pilatus in Russia, and a pilot, who showed me the plane and told me a bunch of interesting things. Yeah, I can't really complain about the situation. MAX 2019, by the way, was the premiere for the Swiss business jet in Russia. A really beautiful airplane with many interesting solutions, which will need to be discussed separately. Now, Pilatus faces a titanic task, to make this aircraft as successful as its older brother, that, of course, was also here. Next to the jet plane stood the already well-known bestseller, the turboprop PC-12. Reliable avionics, excellent cabin, efficient airframe, and of course, the brand Pilatus door are loved by operators and owners. More than 1600 aircraft are flying around the world. The figure speaks for itself. There were other guests from the world of business aviation. The younger sister of the Cessna Citation jet family, model CJ-1. Seven passengers, less than five tons of mass. The engines, by the way, are the FJ-44 from the same family as the PC-24. 
Italian design exotic Diageo Avanti with an insane airframe design, a front wing, and pushing engines in the rear, as well as the pretty Piper Malibu Meridian turboprop, equipped with the PT-6 engine, like the Pilatus PC-12 but less powerful. The aircraft is smaller than the Swiss and twice as light. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to enjoy the beauty of these business jets in the weekend. At the end of the program during the first days, the aircraft left the show, some of them on the volunteer thrust. The pilot, by the way, was not enthusiastic about this way of rolling out, but it looked pretty funny. In this parking lot, several more planes were warming in the sun. The real veterans, MiG-3 and I-15 BIS fighters, participants of air battles in the blazing sky of World War II, as well as the airplane that does not particularly require introduction, a flying tank and bane of Wehrmacht, the Il-2 attack aircraft. The whole trinity is in perfect condition and fully capable of flying. This, of course, is the result of tremendous work of renovators, given that the planes were actually lost in battles and laid on the bottoms of lakes and swamps since the mid-1940s. And now look at them. Man, what a long story, and just a small tour of the exhibition. In fact, having spent several days here, I'll say that most likely I didn't even see half of it. MAX is an event of a very large scale, and in many ways is quite different from its foreign counterparts. It is more homey, I guess. There isn't many foreign models here, however, it is more people-oriented. While, for example, the Paris or Farnborough air shows are business forums and venues for signing epic contracts, MAX is more of a huge aviation festival. Therefore, it holds the record for the number of visitors. Nearly 600,000 people is a huge figure. On the other hand, just nearly $4 billion worth of contracts were signed here, against $61 billion in Paris. But it was more comfortable to relax, walk around, and there was more space, with an infinite number of cafes, barbecues and wide fields, where you could lie down and enjoy the views of aircraft flying overhead. And, for those who want to get to know the industry more closely, 827 exhibitors from 33 countries. Such a party only happens once every two years. Now, we are waiting for MAX 2021. And today, the adventure comes to an end. Like the video and subscribe to the channel not to miss the continuation. The air show is over, but some of the exhibits are still waiting for us in future stories. Fast flights and soft landings to you.